The epistle for the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary is taken from the book of Judith. The Lord hath blessed you by his power, because by you he has brought our enemies to naught. Blessed are you, O daughter, by the Lord, the Most High God, above all women upon the earth. Blessed be the Lord who made heaven and earth, who has directed you to the cutting off of the head of the prince of our enemies, because he has so magnified your name this day, that your praise shall not depart out of the mouth of men, who shall be mindful of the power of the Lord forever. For you have not spared your life by reason of the distress and tribulation of your people, but have prevented our ruin in the presence of our God. You are the glory of Jerusalem. You are the joy of Israel. You are the honor of our people. The Gospel. The Gospel for today is taken from the Gospel of St. Luke. At that time, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how have I deserved that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, the moment that the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the babe in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who has believed, because the things promised by to her by the Lord shall be accomplished. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, because he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaid. For behold, henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, because he who is mighty hath done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is from generation to generation unto those who who fear him. Thus are the words of today's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. It was on November the 1st, the year 1950, that Pope Pius XII declared dogmatically the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This has been a belief in the church from the very beginning. But because of the, I would say the need, the recognizing of the Blessed Virgin Mary's role in the life of the church, in the life of her children, that to declare this dogma, to be, we could say, the crowning jewel of all the dogmas, the final one that needed to be proclaimed. Now you may notice, if you have missiles that are printed before 1950, some of you do, you will notice it is a different epistle, a different gospel. Even, even the introit, the gradual, the colic, so these things are so different. Because when Pius XII declared the dogma, the church saw fit to, you could say, update, to give a brand new mass for this feast. And one of the things that stands out for me as I'm reading over the Mass is the beautiful choices that the church has made. I've spoken before from the pulpit here that it's not by coincidence that the church chooses certain passages from Scripture. She does so with a purpose. The purpose is to move our souls, to turn our minds to heavenly things. Let's take here for the example in the introit, taken from the book of the Apocalypse. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon was under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. What a beautiful vision, but what does this mean? 
Does this actually pertain to the Blessed Virgin Mary? Well, this gives us a little bit of an opportunity of exploration into sacred scripture. There are certain things in scripture that are taken literally, and the context proves that. There are other things that are taken figuratively. This passage, we would say, is more figurative, but also mystical. As long as we look at a passage in Scripture, one such as this, and we can take a true Catholic interpretation, as long as we follow what Scripture fathers have dubbed, or I should say theologians, the analogy of the faith, As long as how you look at these figurative points in Scripture, as long as they don't go against the teachings of the church, and if it excites your soul to holier and higher, loftier things, that it is a good and it is a blessing. Give you an example with this passage with the Blessed Virgin Mary. A great sign appeared in heaven. We know of the great sign. Isaiah the prophet spoke of the great sign that the Messiah would be born of a virgin. So we knew of this sign. We knew of the blessed Virgin Mary before she was even born. We also know that she was favored in the eyes of God from all eternity. But let's look again. Clothed with the sun. What can this mean? It could mean the glory of her purity, of her chastity, her, her virginity, or her general virtue. Or we could take it a step further. We can take it as many spiritual writers have used the sun as an example of constancy, as an example of following the will of God, which does not change. For an individual who surrenders himself to God's almighty will, who says with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Be done unto me according to thy will. Echoed again by the Apostle Paul. Lord, what would you have me do? What would you have me do? Is like the sun that does not change. Yes, there are clouds that enter in. We can think of those as the clouds of our own human weakness that interrupt it. But the sun never stops shining its rays, does it? It is constant. It does not shift. So she is clothed with it. She is clothed with the will of God upon her. Everything she does is for God's holy will, for His holy satisfaction. To do all for Almighty God, to live for Almighty God, is her purpose. This is why she is clothed with the sun, clothed with his constancy. Take the moon. Where is the moon? But under her feet. The moon changes, doesn't it? The phases of the moon. It reflects our own inconstancy. One day is easy to be friends of God. One day is easy to practice virtue. But a slight temptation comes our way. And we can throw it to the wayside. Some give in to despair. I was doing so well. But forget it now. Some just don't care anymore. Fine. I'm just going to do what I want. It's easy to please God as long as it pleases me. As you all know, this is two incorrect outlooks, both lacking humility, which humility is what is needed. We can say the, the lady, the woman was clothed with the sun, and I would say it was humility that fastened the garment around her. So like the moon, it changes. 
But we have to have that constancy. We have to then follow the example of the woman. And as we take it, the woman being the Blessed Virgin Mary, who did not falter when temptations arose, when trials and tribulations entered her life, especially those trials and those sufferings during the passion of her son. She remained constant, like her divine son, the son of justice, the son of innocence, the son of truth. So she kept these things under her feet. She wore a crown of 12 stars. We can, we can take this as her relationship with the church, with the 12 apostles. How she is the mother of the church. She is our mother. We know this. As scripture has taken the passage... I'm sorry, as the church is taken from the passage in Scripture when our Lord was on the cross and said to St. John, Behold thy mother, saying to us, Behold your mother, and behold your queen, who is crowned with the twelve stars of the twelve apostles, showing that there is no Separation, or no, should be no difficulty for us to understand her role. This has been the teaching of the church, of her assumption into heaven since the very beginning. It is the culmination of her life, the reward of her virtue, the reward of her constancy. And to take now upon herself this role as the mediatrix of grace, as the queen of heaven and earth, to go to Mary in order to more perfectly come to her divine Son. This is why St. Louis de Montfort says, if you want to find the easiest way of getting to our Lord, imitating Him, imitate Mary, go through Mary. I'm not saying there are other ways to do it, this is, we would say, the way of excellence. To follow the example of her who is our example in the school of Christ. For she so conformed herself with her divine son so perfectly that I believe it was St. Ephraim who compared her to a perfect copy or translation of our Lord. If our Lord was a, a document like Scripture, she imitated Him perfectly. And she takes on this role, this role which was given to her by God Himself. We know that from historically, it is through Mary that we... We have our Savior through her womb. And that has not changed. We come to our Lord through her. So to say she is crowned with the stars, 12 stars, crowned with that of the church, as queen of the church, we are her subjects. We are also her children to come to her with confidence, to come with her with our pain, our sorrow, to come with her with our joys. She is always ready to listen, this benevolent queen of heaven. And if you look at the other prayers that are contained in today's Mass, I will go right to the communion and all generations shall call me blessed because he who is mighty has done great things for me. He, see how that humility 
realizing that all the honor, all the prestige we give to the Blessed Mother begins and ends with Christ. She is saying, if this is that way for me, it is that way for you. All honor you have in overcoming sin, overcoming temptation, growing in virtue, it all comes from Christ. That is what we have to remember. And these feasts in which we honor the great, wonderful saints of God, and today the Mother of God, should remind us how to get to that holy road. The holy road to Jesus Christ, the holy road of constancy, is to the road of humility. Amen. Benedictio Dei, mi potendis, Padris, Efidis, Veritus, Sandi. Shinnit super of all, Spani Semper, Amen.